In this video, we'll be looking at some special trig limits. Press pause to copy these in your notes. When you're ready to continue, press play. Our first trig limit is the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0. Or we could write that as the limit of x over sine x as x approaches 0. And this is equal to 1. Now notice that the denominator here is the same as the argument of the sine function. Also here, the numerator is the same as the argument. And that's important to remember for this theorem. Our second trig limit is the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus the cosine x over x. And again, we have the denominator is the same as the argument on the cosine function. And that limit is 0. Let's do a few problems. For this problem, we have a sine of 8x over x and the limit as x approaches 0. So we'll be using this first theorem. And we'll notice that the argument is 8x, but the denominator is just x. So I need to change that so that I have an 8x in the denominator. And the way we can do that is to multiply top and bottom by 8. Now I have an 8x in the denominator, and I have an 8x in the argument. So I'm going to now find the limit as x approaches 0 of 8 times, and then sine 8x over 8x. Well, we can use our limit theorem that says we can take this constant out in front. So this is equal to 8 times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 8x over 8x. This we know from our first theorem is equal to 1. So I have 8 times 1 which gives me 8. Now for this problem, um, tangent theta is nowhere in these theorems, but I do know that tangent is the same as sine divided by cosine. So I'm going to rewrite this problem as the limit as theta approaches 0. And then I'm going to separate the tangent and make it sine theta over cosine theta. And then my theta out here, I'll just put that as a factor in the denominator. Right. Now I have a sine theta in the numerator, so I can use this first theorem. I'll simplify this to the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta over theta, and then 1 over cosine theta. This first part is equal to 1. So I have 1 times, and then the limit as theta approaches 0 of 1 over cosine theta, we know that the cosine of 0 is 1. So I basically have 1 times 1, which is 1. On this one, we have the limit as alpha approaches 0 of cosine squared alpha minus 1 over alpha. So this expression is similar to the second expression. Um, 
what I'll need to do, this is the difference of squares. So let me factor that. I have the limit as alpha approaches zero of cosine alpha plus one times cosine alpha minus one. And that's over alpha. Now I'm almost there. Uh, this is turned around. I have one minus cosine x right here. And this is cosine alpha minus one. So the way we can turn that around is Let me copy this one. Is to factor out a negative sign here. So then, once my negative is pulled out, this negative one becomes a positive one. And then this cosine alpha becomes a negative cosine alpha. Now for me to use this, I need a 1 minus cosine x over x, and that's equal to 0. So I can take this factor and this factor and separate those from the other factors. So I'm doing the limit as alpha approaches 0 of negative 1 times cosine alpha plus 1, and then that's over 1, and then this one is 1 minus cosine alpha over alpha. So from our theorem, this expression, if we took the limit as x approaches 0, is equal to 0. So this expression is equal to zero, and we know anything times zero is zero. So my answer on this one, the limit is equal to zero.